Hello, here is a very early peep at what's due to come out in Beaver Builder version 2.4, which as I'm recording this is only out in alpha version 1, meaning I guess that anything on the feature list here could effectively change things, could get added, maybe even taken away, but I'm sure things will change as they get feedback from all of us. It's available in all of our Beaver Builder accounts to download. It's obviously not something we'd want to put on our live sites or even production sites. I think the the Beaver Builder's own demo site carries the latest version, so you can probably test it from there. But if you want a place to go to with some examples set up, then you can use my site. I'll go to the homepage. It's at beta.beaverjunction.com. Link will be below. You'll need to come here, enter your email address. I won't do anything with that email address. Click on the button. That will send you a link. When you click on that link, it will spin out a new version of this site. And for a few hours, you'll be able to do pretty much what you like with it. Now, before I move on to the actual features, I should mention something because I've heard this and it might help to put things in context. So we're used to the fact that the Beaver Builder team take a fairly long time over their development. We like that because it makes their stuff reliable. And I don't think there's many plugin authors out there who make public their alpha version. Generally, I think for the last couple of years, it's been one major release a year. I think now what I've heard is that they're moving more towards quarterly. So when you're taking a look at what's here, then you have to set it in that context. And I'm pretty sure from what I've heard that a lot of the things that are here, mostly modules, are related to other things that are planned as well and will be due to come. Also, if you're somebody like me seeing all the extra modules here, I'm very conscious about updates and not having things that the clients might not want to see or surprises like that or changes in performance or getting plug-in bloat. So since version 2.3, you're able to disable any of these modules anyway and have no impact on your performance. Okay, with that done, let's have a quick look. We've got four new modules list search login and button grip modules I'll take a look at those in a moment we've got integration with assistant now assistant is you're seeing that here and in fact when you're logged in you'll also see this here and it's working on this alpha version now assistant is a plugin not directly related to beaver builder which is by the beaver builder team I think about a year ago it won a plugin competition and an award for that it's still in pre-release it's just had some new updates looks really exciting what it is and I'll do this in another video I think but it's just a way of being able to navigate nicely around your WordPress site and carry out certain tasks such as duplicating a post something that would need its own plugin for and also organizing media or tagging up some of your posts as well looks really exciting I'll cover this in another video but it's just one of the benefits of Beaver Builder that we've got it integrated as well into the builder we've got some new additions to the video module I'll cover that in a moment I'm going to skip this one right now we've got a groundhog integration I don't use this personally with the subscribe module and the last two points here are more technical if we're using layout short codes it's going to add the CSS to the head rather than the body and something that I learned because I needed to ask about this the there's an update to the editor that's used in the page builder for code editing so if you're doing your CSS and JavaScript within the page builder as I'm often doing the editor that's used for that has been updated and apparently is this one it's called ace didn't know that to this point okay let me just cover the one that I skipped over which is the one that actually excites me the most strangely it's uh, in the row um, settings we've got a new background option when we click on that option it allows us a space to put in our embedded codes HTML our short codes and as it mentions here we could add in our slideshow so I did exactly that here this is why you've seen this animation this is provided this is a slide from Smart Slider 3, which I've really got into using recently. And I'm just using it in this case as a background and Beaver Builders on the top. I've done the same on another example here. If you go and check this out, I'm using Smart Sliders effects over here. But of course, it just opens up the opportunity to put all sorts of fancy things in, in our backgrounds here. So I went a little bit silly on the bottom here and put in this SVG, which I could just add, which can be animated with CSS there. So I think I'll do a video on that because it's opened up a whole bunch of ideas. But for me, that's probably the, the kind of key exciting thing. The rest of the stuff is probably modules that needed to be there for some people let me just go and cover those so the first one is the list module 
Here it is. Um, it's not like some third-party modules where you can put all different icons and colors or photographs against each of your list of items. Here it is fairly basic. It has been requested no end of time. So you get to pick the one color. Um, you get to pick what, obviously, for the code underneath. It doesn't change the, the look, but for the code underneath, you select that. You pick your icon, decide whether you're going to use uh, a header. Well, if you're using a the header, then you can pick what type of header it's going to be. And let me go into list items here so it makes more sense. We've got the choice of being able to use a header, as I'm doing here, which we can lay, or content, or both. And I've done so you can put whatever you like in your content and then within the options you get to decide where your icon is going to be placed next to the content or the header and that's pretty much all there is to say on that one as you can see here i've done some other general styling that you can do on our modules these days put some drop shadow there's also some separators that i can have and all the general choices there and i've put the icon here against the content rather than the header and there's other options so this is something probably that i won't use what i've been doing more recently is using um code settings plugin something by justin booster the lead developer for uh, beaver builder i don't know if that's coming into beaver builder in the future but it's a github plugin which allows you to add css and javascript to individual modules rows and columns so i've been using that for my list items because i might do more things than are here but for anybody who needs all you need to set up some templates or something that might be quite useful something again which is requested a lot and will be useful to me is this search module let me just go over to logged out version so i can show it better um so Basically, this allows you to um, do the styling for your search module. I'm probably going to use this a lot in my Beaver Thema replacement headers instead of using the WordPress standard widget where I can style this and I can decide what text is going in the inputs here and on my buttons and all the general styling that's going on. So you can see I've changed this to find stuff and go. We've got the option at the moment to have the button or without the button, which I'm showing here. It's got a nice little bit of functionality here let me just go and remove this oh well you can see it here it does a little Ajax thing and searches your posts by your search and it also gives you the option to be able to display the thumbnail that's associated with that page or post if you've got one I don't think this is working in alpha one at the moment but I noticed there's also a setting for a fallback image you can pick which one of your crops in WordPress you're going to show as your image if you want that or not have it at all so that's quite nice whizzy functionality there i like that um there is something else which is quite nice but for me personally this is a bit of feedback i think it needs to change so you, you can expand out which i really like um and but what i found is if you start to put your text in here the natural thing to do is because it's a button and it says click a search on it i'm going to do that and I end up closing it again by accident so that might be a ui problem it might be solved by having this as an icon instead which uh, clicks out or maybe as beaver builder does in its theme um, when you click it it enters below so it's not maybe so obvious but and some something's different about this which makes me close this could be just me be interesting to get other people's feedback okay the login form module i think there was a poll some time ago what you know what people needed next in terms of some extra modules i think this is probably one i voted for because i did make a membership site just entirely using beaver builder with thema conditions so i showed different things to different members and i could have really done with this now we're seeing the logged out at the moment because i'm obviously logged into wordpress and i'm not in the page builder if i go back into page builder we'll see what it looks like so we can have it stacked we can have it in line we can decide what's going to be in the inputs here which is useful on mine i only really wanted them to put in the email but with it being wordpress you can put user or email we only collected their email so that was needed there um there's a, if you're testing this straight away you'll notice there's a little bug which is reported and will be fixed um if you you can decide to have the remember me or forget uh on or off but it collapses at the moment if you turn just one of those off um, but that will just be fixed, just a CSS matter. There is a, some other nice uh, functions within there where you can decide the redirection URL 
on login or log out. Again, really handy for those membership. You don't want them to go to the default up into the dashboard. You want them to go to a particular page. Then you can do that with this. So this is one I know is being worked on at the moment. So things may be changing with it, but I think it's quite useful if you need that kind of thing. I mean, just bear in mind as well, though, if you do go to the forget, then that's going to serve up the standard WordPress so it's going to have that. You would need to style that like I needed to on the membership style. So just something to bear in mind. Okay, the next one is button group. Well, there's not much to say about that. You've got stack in and in line with this one. But effectively, you can style the two buttons or however many buttons you want to put in overall from central place. Or you can do that individually. Um, this is probably one I'm likely to turn off because although this might make it easy for somebody new who needs to have two calls to action, something I tend to avoid. Um, I would do it with, with columns. It would, for anybody starting up, then they wouldn't need to worry about that responsiveness. But I probably, rather than have two button um, options for clients in the page builder, will probably leave it at one and just do this with columns. That's my personal take. Maybe this needs some feedback. It's not like how, um, where I might want to use it on third party uh, pack where you've got a little connector. So whenever I need it, it's usually two buttons where it's an either or option. And in that case, I wouldn't mind a little connector that communicates that I can change that is showing that it is either or. But that's not in this group at the moment. But as I say, it's early days. It's just looking for feedback. It, it would have been requested at some point, and that's why it's here. Okay, the video module. Again, I need to go into the logged out version. So a couple of additions have been added to that one. So if you're uploading your own videos to WordPress, there's a player that you can use. That's Beaver Builder ones here. If you go into there, you can hide various different things. So I think I've hide, hidden the duration and the volume here. So you can hide different things as you want. There's also, again, at the moment, this is just if it's your own videos rather than embedded ones then you've got the light box which you can use which is going too slow while i'm recording this and finally one which i'm really not sure about at all which is this sticky you can turn on the sticky positioning which is just using sticky css to hold this in place um for me obviously you've seen plenty of these things on bbc or youtube where the video itself carries on playing when you scroll down so you can look at the page very handy usually minimizes goes off into one of the corners of your site and you're able to click off it and make it disappear or it will pop back to its position and carry on playing there all those kind of things this isn't this it just sticks to the top so for me I, I need to do the whole thing, as you can see in some of the third-party plugins, or probably not be there at all. That's just my personal view on it. It's interesting. Again, I'll just share my own thing. I don't now use the video modules really very often for Beaver Builder because I did a video on this before. I usually use in the third-party service like um, YouTube. And what I'm trying to do is to get the performance of that. So I use the Google technique of only having it show the... Um, the thumbnail rather than load all the scripts to play the video until somebody needs to play that video. That's something that's been incorporated in some of the third party add ons. It's something that I can add in myself again with one of my saved rows. For me, that's the kind of thing that I would like to have the performance element in a Beaver Builder Core module rather than something like that. But that's just my personal take on it. I think it's really awkward with a video module because there are so many different things now that you could possibly want from the one module. And I don't know if that's always so sensible for the UI. But anyway, throw in my own personal opinion in there. And I think that's pretty much it, really. Uh, yes, I've covered all the things that here. I hope that was at least useful to someone. I'd really love to hear what other people's thoughts are on, on these new additions. Anyway, if it was helpful to you, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a really nice day. and I hope to see you on another video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.